Okay, so in Illustrator, this is where we left off. We were working on our black vector shapes. We started by live tracing a composite that I did in Photoshop and cleaned up. And when you live trace, it outputs each path. And I have it here on the gray so you can see that there's no white shapes here. It outputs each path. and it collects them all into a group that you live traced. So if you want to select any one individual thing, you can use the small selection tool, which is the white pointer arrow, and just hover over it and click. And if it's something that's a paper cutout that would be, uh, that would fall out of a stencil, you know, all its own, it is just one of these paths. So the other way you can select it is over here. And we could also, if we can select it, we can turn it off and on, right? And if we select it, we can also modify it. So we have a few different ways that we can modify these paths that we're creating. For instance, if I live traced it and I didn't like how sharp those edges were and I wanted to soften that out, my favorite way is using the pencil tool. And a shortcut, once you're using another tool to get back to that direct selection tool is just to hold down Command. But in order to change it, you have to be able to see the anchors. So you have to have it selected so you see the individual anchors. And then the pencil tool, you simply, they're like magic scissors. You draw through some anchors and you end through some anchors and it will redraw the path for you. And then if I wanted it to narrow a little bit, I could do that. If I wanted it to come more to a point and narrow a little bit, I could do this. And if I got a little too sloppy with how I drew it, it won't sync up. So you have to be fairly precise. In fact, Illustrator was designed to be used with a mouse. So in some ways, a mouse can be the most effective because it's all about really precisely clicking. The other things you can do, which is great, and why in many ways Illustrator is a better, better shape tool than Photoshop could ever be, is because for each of these tools, like the pencil tool, like the eraser, and like the blob brush, and I'm going to go through all those again for you, which are ways to modify your vector once you have it, ah. um, you can double click on the tool itself and you can set it to be either more smooth or more accurate. And so smoothing, it won't pick up every little jitter you have. It kind of changes your sketchy line into a smooth animator's line. But if you need to pick up a lot of crazy detail, then you want to set it to be more accurate. And then you might do better using your stylus. Now, it's easy to think of all logos and all graphic symbols being perfectly clean. And certainly the most corporate ones that, you know, spend $100,000 for it and just go through tons and tons of iterations, those are perfectly clean. But for this project, our first use of Illustrator to create a graphic symbol, I'm not expecting every little anchor to just be perfectly placed. I'm expecting you to struggle with it and to see that there's really no substitute for getting in there and kind of hand cutting each shape very carefully. But some of your images are going to be a lot more complicated than others. So let's go through some of these tools for modifying. I'm not going to go through and fix every single one of these right now because on the whole, when I look at it, it does the job I want it to do, right? It looks like an earth that's spinning. It looks flat and graphic and pretty clear. But what I can spend my time on are, are things when I scale it down with command minus bug me a little bit, like these little wobble lines. These should be smooth. I shouldn't have those little bumps in there. And these curves, I just don't want people to pay much attention to them. So I want them to look hand done, but I don't want them to look overly lopsided or computer generated, right? I want them to look intentional. Whoops. Remember, you got to start on the path and end on the path. So I really like the pencil tool for this. You could also use the pen tool. 
You could also just use the direct selection tool and grab anchors and move, move them and change them like that with the curves or with the anchors themselves. But then there are other modifications you have to do sometimes besides just recutting your shapes. Because the problem with just recutting with the pencil tool is that you have to have everything perfectly planned out. And I'm not so sure I'm done experimenting with this logo or this graphic symbol treatment yet. So, yeah, this is looking pretty good. But I'm going to show you a few other tools that I've shown you in, you know, in the previous videos as well, but just to remind you. I'm trying to find a good candidate. Okay, so now I'm, I'm looking at this row. So I could redraw each shape, but I can also use another tool to kind of get rid of some of this bumpiness, especially when it's really subtle. And it's right underneath the pencil tool. It's called the smooth tool. Now, if you're having trouble using your pencil tool and having it always create new paths instead of redrawing existing paths because you're having trouble starting through an anchor and ending through an anchor, the smooth tool solves that problem for you. It just averages the anchors. So you see that little point there? I just use the smooth tool and it will just automatically, I just kind of draw over it. Doesn't matter if I hit the anchors or not, it will even them out, you know, from that to, whoops, from that to redo smooth and redo smooth to that. Now you do have to be careful with the smooth tool because it does affect all of the anchor points on the path, even the corners and the edges. So if you have a shape that has sharp edges or sharp corners and then also smooth curves, your smooth tool will also soften those sharp points. So you want to be mindful not to overdo it. But it can save you a lot of time. And then sometimes you need to do like a hole punch tool into your paper. And there's no way to do that by just redrawing your shapes. Right? So for instance, if I wanted another little you know, motion line in here, there's no way that I can use the pencil tool to redraw this shape to create another swoosh in there without doing it from the edge. But if I want it from the middle, I have to punch a hole first. So for that, I use the eraser tool, which you can double click and you can set the size, you can set the angle. You can set it to be pressure sensitive so you can use it with your tablet. You cannot set the eraser though uh, to be either smooth or accurate, right? So the eraser will always be very accurate. So what I do is I just punch a hole. Notice I didn't paint a white shape. I punched a hole in the black shape and then I can redraw it and make it into something else. Right, with the pencil tool or or with the smooth tool, if I just want to smooth it out. Now, what if I have a hole punched in it and I decide, oh, I don't want that. No, that looks awful. Now it looks like the earth is sweating or something. How do I fill in gaps? Because there's no way to redraw the edge with the scissors, even a magic scissors like the pencil, and just get rid of everything. I can narrow the shape, but I can't get rid of it completely. In fact, I'm even having trouble narrowing it. There we go. So we use the blob brush for this. And this is a tool we'll use a lot more when we start illustrating. But the blob brush is under the paintbrush tool. It's important to use the blob brush instead of the paintbrush because the paintbrush will always make a new path with each brush stroke, which is annoying as anything. The blob brush will and you double click it and you can select the size and you can make it more smooth. So this is my, one of my favorite tools as well. This will automatically blend in with the existing paths as long as they're not locked, right? So it is filling in the shapes. So it's like liquid paper that we're pouring over it. And that can be very helpful. And if you set it to be pressure sensitive for your tablet, you can just draw with the blob brush and do some beautiful just straightforward inking. So if I wanted more wobble, you know, around the hand, I can just use the blob brush and my tablet and I have it set to be 
11 point size, pressure sensitive with a variation of 11 points. That means I can draw thin or I can draw thick and it will smooth it out for me as I go. So this could be a good way to work on top of your sketch as well. And I can even kind of re, I can add stuff, you know, to existing paths and now it's all still one path. But in order to smooth it out or redraw it, I need to then use the pencil. So I might decide I just don't want this one and I just don't want this one. Instead, I want to use the blob brush to just paint my own. Because I want it to look more like it's spinning round. Trust myself more. And then I can always modify what I get with the pencil tool and the smooth tool. And because these are perfectly clean shapes, you know, vector shapes, if you're not getting exactly what you want, think of how you use the shape tools in Photoshop back in our second exercise. I could just take this shape and flip it. You know, we could do different things. If this is bothering me, I can use the eraser tool and I can just cut it out completely, but I have to see the anchor points first, right? And then I can modify it to my desire. All right. Thin this one out a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more shape variety. So this is graphics. If you take a graphic design course, uh, I always recommend you try to do one that's that's analog first, like intro to design on our campus is a black and white 2D design course. And you do kind of paper cutouts and arrangements of things like that, as opposed to doing everything on the computer. But this is the computer version of doing paper cutouts and really trying to, to make informed and uh, clean decisions about what's important. Yeah, we're getting there. <coughs> so you can always save your work by hitting Command S because it's a vector program illustrator. It doesn't take as much memory as Photoshop. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't experiment. So what if I want to do the equivalent that we used to do all the time in Photoshop, duplicate it and try something else. So I can take that whole layer, I can select it, and then I can hit Edit, Copy, Command C, and then I can lock that layer underneath, turn off the eyeball and make a new layer, just for my own organizational purposes. This layer is going to show its anchor points and paths in red instead of blue because each layer as you develop it will give you a new anchor color. And I'm then going to say edit and instead of just paste, I'm going to say paste in place. And that puts it perfectly on top of the other one, right? So I have the one that's in blue on that layer and then I have the one that's in red on this layer. And I'm going to turn off the one below and lock it so I don't accidentally select anything there. That allows me to try something totally different here. And the thing I want to try that's different, it goes back to when I was sketching this and compositing this in Photoshop. Maybe I don't want the, uh, the hand to be line based and the earth to be filled in black, right? Maybe I want the hand to also be filled in black. So I'm going to show you a tool for that. And it's one that I've just been introduced to by a student who looked into it and was curious about some of these new tools in Illustrator. And it's a fill bucket tool, just like you see in Photoshop. So before I get too much into it, uh, 
I might clean up some of it. 